How is it going guys and welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. And how's it going guys? It's Josh Olufemi here, live from Manhattan, New York City. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be traveling to Times Square and I'm gonna be telling you guys five hacks that you've got to implement when you're using Premiere Pro. Come on. All right guys, we're here in the subway, so it's gonna be a little bit louder. But our first hack that we're gonna talk about is something called auto save. This is something that's gonna really save your life a lot of times because Premiere crashes, as we all know, more than it should. Auto save is really easy to implement. All you gotta do is go into edit and preferences, and then you're gonna click on auto save. Then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're auto saving every one minute and that you auto save 200 versions of the original project. All right guys, so our next tip is something called testing your cuts without having to move the playhead. This is a really cool trick called play around. This play around is something that you can implement by hitting shift K. What is it? Basically, it means that say you've created a cut somewhere and you want to be able to play through that cut. Maybe it's a couple cuts. You can actually set the number of seconds that you want to play around your playhead, whether it be starting from two seconds behind your playhead and ending two seconds after your playhead, or maybe 10 seconds before your playhead and then ending 10 seconds after your playhead. It's a really easy way just to preview a localized sequence of cuts that you've done to make sure that they're actually something that you like. Guys, we're going to pause for a short ad. So you're a Premiere Pro video editor, you gotta check out this transition pack that the team has made just for you. These transitions are meant to give your high-paced edits just a tad bit of extra oomph. They are easily tweakable, they play very light in your timeline, and they're just a ton of fun to mess around with. These hundred transitions require no installing, no plugins, and work perfectly in the latest edition of Premiere Pro. And check this out, with every purchase, I'll throw in the entire Olufemi Creative Pack absolutely for free. This includes three additional transition packs, the box lens transition pack, the camera snap effects pack and the identity transitions pack. In addition to that, it also includes three of my light leaks packs. There's the bloom light leaks pack, the light opal light leaks pack, and of course the sea glass light leaks pack. The Olufemi creative pack is valued at over $119 alone. And again, you get it for free when you purchase the track mat transitions pack today. Every single pack that you're about to download comes with an unlimited license that allows you to use all the transitions and all the effects in as many videos as you want forever. So what are you waiting for? It's time to take a leap, try these out, and tell me what you think. It's time to get back to the video. The next hack we're going to talk about is something called adjustment layers. All right guys, we're here in Times Square. Adjustment layers are a beautiful thing that you can do when you're inside your timeline. They're basically invisible pieces of footage that you can slap effects on and they'll affect any pieces of footage, any clips that you got below them. So for example, say you have um, a blur effect or some type of color effect on the adjustment layer, it's going to apply to any clip below that adjustment layer. And this saves a little bit of time, so you don't have to put the exact same effect onto every single clip. Just stretch an adjustment layer over every single clip in your timeline that you want to apply the effect to, and bam, the effect will be on that clip. In order to create an adjustment layer, all you got to do is go in your project bin, right click, go to new item, then go to adjustment layer, and then it's going to appear in your project bin, then drag it on your timeline over all your clips. And bam, it's as easy as that. Next hack is something called apply attributes to multiple clips. This is actually really helpful and it's a cool way where you can apply an effect on one clip and then quickly copy it and place it on multiple other clips. This is how you do it. Say you have like a Lumetri color effect on one clip. All you gotta do is copy and then when you go to your other clip or maybe multiple clips, you can highlight all the clips that you want and then right click again and instead of doing paste, you're gonna do paste attribute. And then what happens is a little window comes up as you can see, and then you can actually choose the attributes that you actually want to paste from your original clip onto your new clip. And then you click OK, and voila, it's just like that. All right guys, I'm getting a little tired, but we're getting to our last hack. Forgive me if I butcher some of these terms, I'm not an audio expert, but this is my way that I always normalize audio when I'm editing audio, mainly my voice for tutorials like this. What this hack is going to do is it's going to bring all of my audio levels to an acceptable level without allowing them to peak by actually placing an effect on the audio track as opposed to on individual audio clips. This is really cool because it allows one effect to affect all of the audio clips that are on the track as opposed to having to place that same audio effect 
on every single clip. First things first, go to the Windows tab, then click on the Audio Track Mixer. And then you're gonna click on the white carrot on the right hand side. Then go over to the track column that's associated with the track number that you want to affect and then click on the drop down. Then go over to amplitude and compression and click on multi-band compressor. Go double click on that multi-band compressor effect and then go over to the presets. Then click on the drop down and go over to broadcast. Then you're gonna set your margin to negative three and then you're gonna boost your gain right before your voice hits negative three decibels on the decibel meter. And that's it, play through it and look at your beautiful normalized audio. All right guys, uh, it's your boy Josh and your boy Johnny here. Incredible DP, been shooting this whole tutorial. We're out here again in beautiful Times Square. We've been basically battling the rain, uh, walking down um, streets, jaywalking, having a fun time here in beautiful New York City, talking about five incredible Premiere Pro hacks. Thanks so much for watching guys. And as always remember, keep it chill.